Good morning, this is Mr. Priscilla, but this is my 1325 class. I'm fighting a cold, so forgive my messed up voice. We have the function, oh, we're working with local extrema and increasing and decreasing. This is my 1325. And Here's a function. We have the rational function f of x equals x plus 6 divided by x plus 1. And we want to know when is the function increasing and on which intervals is the function decreasing. So we're looking for increasing. Let me write this down so I remember what we're doing. Increasing, <coughs> decreasing intervals. We have that sequence of steps. The first thing we have to do is find the derivative. So there's my function. I'm going to find the derivative here in purple. f of x is equal to x plus 6 over x plus 1. We're going to find the derivative. What rule are we going to have to use to find this derivative? Quotient rule, yeah, not a trick question. That means we need the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. What's the derivative of the numerator? One. The derivative of the denominator? One as well. So we have f prime of x is equal to, using the quotient rule, it's the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. Notice that crisscross pattern. Derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over. Okay, so the denominator squared, that's an x plus 1 squared. Can we start canceling out now? Can we cancel an x plus 1? No, the numerator is not in factored form. If you use the quotient rule and immediately start canceling, you're doing something wrong. We can clean this up a little bit. That's just x plus 1. Distributing the minus 1, this is going to work out very nicely. That will just give us a minus x minus 6 all over x plus 1 squared. So our derivative is working out very nicely to be on top negative 5 divided by x plus 1 quantity squared. So we find our derivative. Next we ask ourselves, when is f prime equal to 0? When is this uh, fraction equal to 0? Set negative 5 over x plus 1 quantity squared equal to 0. We're about to prove something that's very significant. First thing I do is I try to get rid of the fraction. To get rid of that fraction, I multiply both sides by x plus 1 squared. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 1 squared. x plus 1 squared. And all you're left with on the left-hand side is negative 5. 0 times that stuff stays 0. A fraction equals 0 only if the numerator is equal to 0. If you have a fraction and you set it equal to 0, as soon as you multiply through to get rid of that denominator, you're left with just the numerator. So when I looked at this, when is this fraction undefined? When the numerator is 0, when is that numerator equal to 0? Never. So when is f prime uh, equal to 0? Never. Third step, when is f prime, no, so when is f prime equal to zero? Never. I think I said the wrong thing there. When is f prime undefined? When is f prime equal to zero? It's never equal to zero. A fraction is equal to zero when the numerator is zero. A fraction is undefined when its denominator is equal to zero. So. 
when is the denominator equal to zero? That's why I like to have my, if I'm finding a derivative, if I can get the derivative written as a single fraction, that's why I like to do that, because then if I need to find my critical numbers, when is the numerator equal to zero? When is the denominator equal to zero? That's why a single fraction for a derivative is nice. Well, what are we going to get here? When is x plus 1 squared equal to 0? The only way that's going to happen is if x plus 1 equals 0, which means x is equal to negative 1. Fourth step, we draw ourselves a number line. Oh, this is nice. This is actually a nice one to be doing. We only have one number to label on that number line. The number we're labeling, use f prime. The number we're labeling is negative 1. To the left of negative 1, is f prime positive or negative? To the right of negative 1, is f prime positive or negative? This is where we're going to check our, uh, choose our numbers and test our intervals. So this is step number 5. We're testing the interval. What number do you want to test to the left of negative 1? Negative 2, testing negative 2. By the way, we're looking at the sine of f prime. That's what we're showing on this number line, the sine of f prime. So plug it in negative 2. Here's the derivative. We'll have a negative 5 over negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1 quantity squared. There's f prime. positive or negative. The exact value of the derivative doesn't matter. All that matters is positive or negative. Positive? Uh, wait a minute, I think it's going to be negative. This denominator is going to have what sign? A negative squared is going to be positive. So negative divided by positive is going to give me a negative. The derivative is negative. That means the function is decreasing. To the right of negative 1, what do you want to test? Over here, what did you say, 0? We'll test 0. So we have f prime equals, that's a negative 5 over, here's the derivative we're plugging into, 0 plus 1, that's a 1 squared, positive or negative. All that matters is positive or negative negative. So, when we move to the other side of negative 1, the function was also decreasing. It doesn't always have to alternate. It doesn't always have to alternate as we've just now seen. So, let's summarize what we found. Increasing and decreasing. Increasing, decreasing. The decreasing part is easy. When is it decreasing? No, I guess I should, part of me, I should say the increasing is easy. When is it increasing? Never. never. It is never increasing. It's falling from left to right and moves to the other side of negative one. It continues falling from left to right. So never. For decreasing, we'll say from negative infinity up to negative one comma, negative 1 to infinity. What happens at negative 1? Negative 1 doesn't give us a y-coordinate. If we try to plug in negative 1 for x, oh, well, let me finish that there. Okay, then I'm going to go back to the function. At negative 1, Plug it into the original function. Here's the original function. Plug it in negative 1. We're not going to get an ordered pair, are we? Negative 1 plus 6 is a 5 over what? Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. That's undefined. A non-zero over 0. At negative 1, the graph has a vertical asymptote. The graph has a vertical asymptote at negative 1. It's decreasing, comes to a vertical asymptote, and then it starts to it resumes decreasing when you move to the other side. But I guess that doesn't matter because here's what we're looking for. It's 
never increasing. It's decreasing from negative one, from negative infinity to negative one, and then from negative one to infinity. Any questions there? What would that vertical asymptote look like if it's negative on this side? Okay, hold on, okay. Well, I'm gonna stop recording now. Bye-bye.